This morning's first giveaway prize is a lock picking set in the form of a little metal card that is small and heavy and pointy. So I'm not chucking it to anybody. I'm going to chuck my business card, and whoever is lucky enough to grab that can come get me to get the uh, uh, lock pick set. <laughs> Sorry. Um, first talk up is uh, Chema and Halako are going to talk to us about being blind drunk last night. I mean blind SQL injection. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming to this session. Uh, first of all, let me introduce myself a little. Uh, I work in a company called Informatica 64. It's a Spain company. I'm from Spain. And I'm also a Microsoft MVP. Uh, MVPs don't work for Microsoft, it's just an award. Some people said that we are most valuable pets, but it's not true. We are most valuable professionals, more or less. And with me, <laughs> with me is Palaco. Palaco is almost working for Microsoft in Yahoo. <laughs> and, <laughs> and he's working at mobility. Both, we are from Spain, and if someone Sometime in your life you meet with someone from Spain, please don't ask for the bullfighters. Well, in Spain, there are a lot of things you uh, probably may talk about, so don't, don't ask for bullfighters because don't everybody, not everybody likes uh, bullfighters. <laughs> well, uh, the session for today is about SQL injection. SQL injection is an old friend. It's, it's been more than 10 years since the first word about SQL injection attacks. Uh, this was the first document we have. The, the first document uh, published about uh, SQL injection is from Rainforest Puppy, and it was published 25th of December in 1998. But uh, this vulnerability is still uh, a good topic in web security. Today, we are going to analyze four points about blind SQL injection attacks and SQL injection attacks. First one is uh, about how it's possible to extract a lot amount of data in only one field in a uh, web application. And the second one is, is possible to construct a binary logic using mathematical operations? The third one is about um, if, if possi it's possible to download files from the server where the database is running uh, using blind SQL injection attacks. And the last one is about it's possible to uh, construct a binary logic with uh, based on time delays uh, in environments where uh, there are not time delays function. Well, let's start for the beginning. So let's get started with the first topic. We are definitely assuming that everybody here knows what is SQL injection and who is Bobby Tables and all that stuff. Okay. Uh, the, in, in this case, what we want to take advantage of this here, or, or basically the, the problem that we want to solve is that sometimes what you want is a lot of, a lot of information for the database. You basically want to download the whole database or lots of tables, lots of, lots of different fields and the stuff. And there are some scenarios where this is possible very easily. Like, for example, say you, that you have a page in which you can have a list of all the news corresponding to a category. Then you can perform this simple union, select the fields that you want from the table that you want. And then because the, t the page is going to render all the rows in the table to, like, to see the news in the category and the stuff, you are basically appending one row for each of the records that is in your query, which is fine. It's a very fast way of extracting data for, for the database. Not, only, not always you have such an opportunity, and most of the times what you have is maybe the, the injection is just in the page that renders the article or whatever thing that is making a query to the database that is expecting just one row set, one, one record set, one row from the database. If, you try, if you're trying to inject here something like union select a star from whatever, and then the result will be more than one row, this will not work. So the way to go around this is like select top one from or select limit one from, depending on the database you are, and then you get the first record. Then you have to make a second query saying, and whatever not equals this other thing to get to the second record, and so on. 
when you have thousands of, of records, this means thousands of queries. And then you can have IDS systems or HTTP firewalls and things like that uh, detecting this behavior and therefore blocking you. What we came here is with a technique to, with just one single query or just very, very few queries, get as much information from the database uh, as possible. So there are, we, we are, we've been doing this for the three most common uh, database engines, uh, SQL Server, uh, MySQL, and Oracle. And the, the fantastic part of it is how easy it was for some of them because it was already supported without us knowing it. In the case of SQL Server, there is a very nice function from SQL Server 2005 that is called for XML, which basically allows you to take any single query that you want and then specify that you want the results in XML. That is, I guess, the purpose of this is the, the very easy integration with all the .NET development environments. So you basically can uh, put together a table to represent data with the table from the database that you want and then get XML in the middle, all that stuff. So it's very easy to do this from a developer uh, point of view. And now for a hacker point of view, it's very easy to take advantage for, from this. So basically what we're going to do is the same technique that we've been using for years, like inserting subqueries in the select fields of our injection, but now in our subquery and only in our subquery, we want to specify that that particular subquery, we want it in XML. What this is going to allow us is to work with a string. It's not anymore a record set of several rows, it's just a string in XML, and then we can parse the string to separate the rows. But from the database point of view, it's just a field. Uh, a couple of tricks here is that we also we don't we don't just want text-based files. We may, might want uh, images or password fields that might be uh, binary encoded and the stuff. So we have the appropriate options for doing that. When it comes to MySQL, uh, it's not that easy. The, there's a way of doing this with XML in MySQL, but it's not uh, supported by default. There is some third-party extension that you ha uh, need to have on the server, and it's not a very popular extension. So when you're attacking a, C a MySQL database, you cannot really expect to find that extension uh, loaded. However, from version 4.1, we have something called group concat. And group concat, what it's going to do is basically is going to concatenate the results from different rows in one single row. So uh, if you see here the example, oops. As you can see here in the example, there is some XML here, uh, but that is, that is not intrinsic to the MySQL way of exploiting this. It's just because when we create our tools to make this, we want to make it as, as, as similar as possible, so we are converting with uh, this query using group concat to something that uses XML tags, and then we parse the response from MySQL the same way that we parse the response from Oracle or, or SQL Server. So... There are some tricks here because there is no unlimited amount of data that you can load from the database. There is some limits in these functions, but of course there's always workarounds to that. And uh, techniques, uh, techniques in Oracle is basically the same. It's a different set of functions, but the technique is, uh, is the same. Something to remark is that in MySQL and Oracle, there is no star support, so you, you cannot inject something like select a star from whatever table and then transfer to XML, because in the XML transformation function, uh, a star is not allowed. Uh, and then you need uh, the information schema tables and that stuff to, to go for the, for the data. So let's see this working. So what we have here is a demo application that we made for the con. Uh, we can exploit this, as you can see here, in the three database engine. We're just going to perform the demo in one of them. The application is a very typical uh, application in, one, in which you can uh, see record sets from the database. So each one of these tabs here would correspond to a record set in the database. And then the kind of injection that you would do here is like, I guess everybody is familiar with this. Union, select, uh, one, two, three, four,
I'm assuming that everybody is familiar with this thing here. Okay. So you can see here how we display the data. Okay. The, just what the data that we inject. If we want something a bit better, so for example, I'm going to choose the, the number four, which is displayed on the screen. And then I'm going to substitute this with some select top one from name. select top one name from sys users. Users. Thing going on here. Don't forget, try it with. Try it with. Well, anyway, th this is the way where you usually insert something. I probably have a typo that I cannot see with the demo, the demo effect, of course. Uh, so the thing is that if I were trying to do here something like uh, select a star, in the, so th the way to do is I do select top one, and then I get the first result. And then I do something like I would get DBO, and then I do select. Uh, uh, se the second row set with maybe select top two or select word user uh, not equals to DBO or things things like that. So. Ah, uh, yeah, sure, absolutely. Ah, the space. Yeah. Uh, there's probably some typo here, but yes, very basic injection. So what we what we want to achieve here is some query like select. Start from the beginning. Schema and then junior here. No, but it's not here. Union select. And then change. And then change the four. <coughs> Take it easy. <laughs> Select top one. Top one. Name. 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 Six users. Anyway, doesn't matter. Uh, we usually inject it in the three. No, no, in the four. No, it's okay. It's in the four. I don't know what anyway, to type. Try that's the right one. Yeah. Well, that's the old way, so don't worry. Yeah. Try the new one. Yeah, exactly. So basically, what what we want to do with the tool here is something like select. I want all the records from the from the table, okay, uh, from these users, and then I want to specify the. I mean. Like this, it will fail because there are several records here. So what I do is for XML uh, row and then binary base64 because there are some uh, passwords in binary form in that data, in that table. So I know if there will be, there's still there. So here we go. That, I don't know how the other one is not working. So basically what we have here is you have the one and the three there. The, you cannot see the four because it's uh, embedded in XML tags, but if you go to the source code, you can see here at the very end, like all the rows from the database. I'm going to highlight one of the rows. Okay. So that it, this is the all the data from the information. So this is one row. This this would be the only thing that I could achieve with. The, the normal techniques, but you can see many other rows below and above this, and I got all of this with one single query. So what we did is we automated this in a tool, and then in this tool, basically what I'm doing here is 
specifying the, the database engine that I want. The tool supports also Oracle and MySQL. That is the, the URL that I'm going to exploit. This is the injection pattern here. So basically I'm just saying with this zero here where I want the injection. This is the injectable uh, parameter. And then I just initialize the query, get the schema, and here we go. This is the schema. Uh, if you go to the debug log, you can see that it's one single query to get the whole schema of the database. If now I want to go for the data, no matter how many rows or, or records are in, this, in these tables, I just can retrieve all the data with one single uh, query again. Same for the other table. Okay. You have to pay the lunch because your first demo wasn't working. That's because I'm using a Windows inside a window. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, the, the second point of the agenda is uh, about the arithmetic blind SQL injection. In, in blind environments, uh, the attacker cannot access directly to the data. To the data, this is just because the web application does, uh, doesn't show any data in error messages, or because the web application doesn't print any uh, data data retrieve. So. Uh, we have to uh, perform a, a blind attack. In this, uh, in, in this environment, we have to inject certain types of queries to change the behavior of the web application and to extract the data. The, the goal is to construct a binary, binary logic to recognize a behavior as a true and a behavior as a false. So the easiest way to do this is just injecting something like one equals to one uh, or one equals uh, and one equals to two. If the web application behaves in different way, uh, in one way uh, and another, we are going to be able to extract all the data from the database. To do this, we can uh, use different characteristics. In 2004, Cameron Hotkey delivered a very nice presentation in Black Hat, and he analyzed uh, the different uh, behavior you can use to extract, to construct the binary logic. The problem, well, this is the, the normal way in blind SQL injection attacks. As you can see in all, all the examples, we can extract all the data from the databases just comparing ASCII value of the letter we are searching for with, uh, with numbers. This is in MySQL, Microsoft SQL Server, and Oracle. The problem is what happened with, this, uh, with those environments in which the vulnerable parameter is in, in, is in a mathematical function. In these environments, we cannot inject logical operators, and we have to construct a binary logic just using ma uh, mathematical operations. First one, first method is dividing by zero. This method was described by David Letchfield 10 ago. And uh, the idea is to, to get the denominator to, to zero when the, when the condition is true in true answer pages. Uh, this will happen, this will only happen with uh, the ASCII value of the letter we are searching for is equal to the counter. So this uh, will, mean in, will mean a true and otherwise uh, will be a false. The second method is uh, just to use the uh, normal response page, I mean the non-injected uh, response page as a true. So we are going to, to add uh, the ASCII value of the, of the letter we are guessing and we are going to subtract the, the value of the counter. When we obtain the same uh, response page, this will mean a true answer page. And the last one, the last one is to overflow the data type. And in this environment, we are going to, to use this division, in, and this division will be only true when the counter matches with the ASCII value of the letter we are, use, we are guessing. Uh, when the division becomes one, then we are going to add a constant that overflows the data type. So let's see this in our testing environment quickly. So in this case, we got an application, and this application use only this parameter, and this parameter is in a mathematical function. So if we try to perform a normal blind SQL injection, I mean one equals to one, we retrieve an error message because it's not a numeric uh, in the parameter. So let's try this. First one, dividing by zero. 
In this example, we are going to uh, use as denominator this, the ASCII value of the letter we are searching for, and uh, minus 99. In this example, we are searching for the first letter of the first user in the six user tables, and it, this is the D, and the ASCII value of the D is 100, so in this case, it's not zero. So what we are going to obtain is not an error. So let's try this. Okay, we retrieve the same and the same record. So we don't have an error message, but if we change this to 100, which is the ASCII value of the letter we're searching for, we are going to obtain an error, okay? Second way, in this case we are going to, to add the ASCII value, in this case is the, we are subtracting, but it's the same, the ASCII value of the letter we're searching for, and we are trying to compare with 99. In this example we are going to, to obtain uh, a different page uh, than the normal page. So first of all, let's try with the normal page without any injection, Oops. with the normal page. And we are going to copy from here to here, perfect. Then try it and we retrieve a record. In this case, this will be the, the normal page, the non-injected page. So. Try, let's try with any value. In this case, we are trying with 99, which is false. So we have to obtain other response pages. But if we change to 100, we are going to obtain the same page. So it means that the ASCII value of the letter we're searching for is the 99, is 100, and the last one, is try to overflow the data type. In this example, we got this constant, a big number multiplied uh, by 333, and this number will be only add to the, to the parameter if this condition is true. I mean, if 99 divided by the ASCII value of the letter we are searching for are equal. So, in this case, it's false because our value is 100. So, we obtain a new a record. And if we change to 100, then this will overflow the data type and we obtain a true answer page. In this case, the error message page. So, Let's go with the third part. <clears throat> well, you've seen how we've been very quick at the beginning with, with how is or how, uh, what is a blind SQL injection vulnerability. We are kind of assuming that everybody's familiar with that. And then we just saw one more technique to, uh, to see if the application is vulnerable. And we've been getting the first character here of the password, uh, sorry, of the, of the uh, user. Uh, you know how to get for the second character of the user and the third uh, uh, character of the user and the stuff. So assuming that everybody knows how to get all the information that this user has permissions for in the database, what else can we do if we know that we are, have a blind SQL injection uh, vulnerability and we want something else that is not in the database, like for example accessing a file. So what we are doing here with this technique is using blind SQL uh, uh, techniques to access contents of files in the in the server, the the way of doing it, this is basically what we want to do is somehow load the contents of the file into the database manager and then convert that file uh, the contents of that file to a string, and then same as we just did, we will go for the very first character of this string, then we will go for the second character of the string, 
just a quick reminder, the way you do this is either you do bitwise operations or you do some kind of uh, binary search, and then you have a maximum of eight queries per character, which would be a lo an average of four or five queries to, to guess each character. When it comes to files, that's mean, that means that you need uh, this lot amount of queries per byte on the file. So as you can see here in the slide, this is trans some way transform the file to a string and then query a string as in any other blind SQL injection application. Uh, there's usually two ways of doing this in, in database manager. One way is creating some kind of temporal table based on the contents of the file. The other way is to load the contents of the file in memory to be used within the query in every single query. So for SQL Server 2000, what we, there was two ways of doing this. A quick and easy way was using uh, built-in drivers. The, you cannot access any kind of data, any kind of file type with this with this technique because you can only access the files that are supported by the drivers. Uh, but then, if that is what you're looking for, it's very easy because with just this single query here, you basically transform this, you basically load the contents on the, of the file to query those with a select statement, as you would do with any other table. Uh, if you want a different uh, type of files. You can, it's just a slightly more complicated because you need to uh, two or three different uh, statements to do this that you have in the slide. And basically what you're doing here is creating a temporal table with the content of the slide, of, of, the, of the file, sorry. You tell the database where is the file, how are you going to separate the fields and the rows and the stuff, and then again access the contents of that table that you just created using uh, a standard Blaze uh, injection techniques. Don't forget to clean up, dropping the, uh, drop the table that you created. Uh, sometimes the user that is, uh, so the user that the web application is, uh, so the, the user that is accessing the database from the web application doesn't have the permissions to create temporal tables, which is not a problem anymore since SQL Server 2005 because we have now these super nice features that allow us to load in memory in every single query the contents of any file in the system as long as the user has permissions to, to get for that. And then this is actually very, very heavy for the server because you are loading the whole file in memory. You're not using drivers here anymore. You're not creating temporal tables anymore. So in every single query, you're f loading the contents of the file in memory and then accessing them. So keep in mind that you might be, a, you might be wanting very big files like images like three megs of images or five megs of images and then because you're using blind SQL injection techniques and as we said we you might need as many as eight different queries per byte this is a lot of queries and then this is a lot of megs in memory so this is very bad for the engine very good for the hacker so Techniques in MySQL and Oracle, we put them here in the presentation just for you to have the record, but it's basically uh, based on the same. Creating temporal tables here in the case of MySQL uh, database, there's tools that have been doing this for more than a year now. And then this is the way you do it in Oracle with plain text files, creating virtual objects that map to physical paths on the, on the server, and then Basically, you tell how do you want to identify different rows that will be records in the table, and how you want to identify different fields that will be columns in the records. Uh, or you can use the built-in uh, DBMS for large object files, uh, large, ob large objects uh, in Oracle. And then this way, you can also access uh, binary files. So again, Let's do this. I mean, this is very, very tedious when you have to do this manually. So we created tools for automating all this stuff. This is, again, a demo application. You can see how we have the four different uh, engines that we support here. We're going to try with one of them, the CQL Server 2005. Okay, and then uh, and one equals one. That's fine. And one equals two. That's not fine. 
so vulnerable to CQL, uh, uh, blind SQL injection. Then we go to our tool. And then in this tool, what we have here is that is the URL that I want to attack. That is the file in the server that I want to extract. That is an injectable parameter that I want to use. That is a keyword that I want to recognize in the test to be able to discern between true and false answers. And then down here I have where do I want to store this in my, in my disk. So we have support for SQL Server also, uh, both versions of SQL Server in the, in the tool. We have support for Oracle. You can specify uh, what kind of file are you trying to access, either uh, text files or binary files, support for MySQL, and then we have the log here. So assuming that everything is set up, we just start this. And if we go to the log, here you can see how it's making like five, six, up to eight different queries per uh, character that I want, okay? Here in the left part, you can see how I'm trying to guess the values with a binary search. And this is going to take a while. Like, depending on the size of the file that you want to access, it's going to take a while. Uh, we can go here. I was trying to uh, store the sum here. So I'm assuming that everybody has seen a sum file before. And you can recognize here the beginning of the sum. Let's keep this running on the background and then go, go back in a while to see how it goes. So, well, <laughs> let's go with the last point of the agenda. Well, now, <clears throat> um, in this part of the of the agenda, we are going to try to to answer the question about if it's possible to perform a blind SQL injection at, at time based time-based blind SQL injection uh, in those environments in which it's not possible to use uh, time delay functions. <coughs> uh, in a scenarios uh, where uh, there are no difference between the true answer page and the false answer page, uh, a time delay uh, blind SQL injection can be performed. The idea is to inject a time delay in the true answer pages. To do this, in several databases, we have a special function to stop the response. Uh, in Microsoft SQL Server, we have the wait for function, and Chris Hanley in 2002 described uh, how it's possible to use this function to stop the true answer. And as you can see in the example, write down how it's possible to stop the response of the database if uh, the condition is true. So in this case, the only thing that we have to do is measuring the time. And if the time is uh, five seconds, this means that the table exceeds and we have access to it. In other uh, database engine, we got uh, other function. For instance, in Oracle, we got the DBMS log package. And in it, we have the sleep function. The problem with uh, this function is that it's, it's necessary to inject into a PL SQL block, and it's not quite common to find this in web application. In MySQL, in version 5 or higher, there is the slip function. And in version 4, we got the benchmark function. Benchmark is a, it's not a time delay function. It's a long time consuming function, and we can measure in uh, time with this function. For instance, this is a real example. Uh, it's an exploit that was published in 2007. It was for a, a game. Some people don't like to lose the, the games. And in it, the, the attacker uh, performed a time-based time, a time blind SQL injection attack. In red color, you can see how the time is measured. And in blue, uh, you can say the injection. The injection is, is quite funny because it's in the uh, user agent um, HTTP header. And in it, uh, he is injecting something like, uh, well, fuck you, is. <laughs> and uh, the injection takes place in the insert, not in the select. And uh, here, as you can see, he is using the benchmark function to 
force a more than seven uh, seconds uh, time delay. At the end, if the response time is greater than seven, it means that this value is part of the of the password. Oh. Well, uh, last August uh, in 2008, Ferru published a new method to perform uh, time-based blind SQL injection attacks. Uh, it was called deep blind SQL injection attack, and in it, uh, he used uh, different time delays depending on the ASCII value of the letter uh, we are searching for. It means if the letter is an A, the response time uh, uh, will be 10 seconds, or if the letter is a B, the response time will be 11 seconds, and so on. To do this, he forced different time delay in the wait for, in the wait for uh, function. Okay? And the question is, and what happened in those environments in which we don't have uh, time delay function, we don't have um, access to the delay function, for instance, in Microsoft Access Databases or DB2 or environments like uh, Oracle without uh, the possibility of injecting in the, in the PL SQL uh, block. Can we still perform an exploitation of time-based time -based plain SQL injection attack? Of course, yes, we can. I always wanted to say this. <laughs> well, <laughs> I always wanted to say this. So <laughs> 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 can you can imagine me in the White House? Well, let's analyze how the 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 query is executed in the database engine. Let's suppose this query with uh, more than one condition. In this example, with condition one and condition two. And in it, the condition one uh, takes 10 seconds to be uh, evaluated for, uh, by the database engine. Condition uh, two uh, takes uh, 100 seconds. The question is, which condition should be executed first? Well, if the heavy condition uh, is executed first, then we are going to obtain uh, more than 100 uh, response time in all the cases. So, as you can imagine, this is a bad decision for, for tuning. So, the idea and what the database engines uh, prefer <laughs> is to evaluate first the light condition. In this example, we are going to evaluate only the heavy condition when the light condition is true. So, we are going to obtain a very short response time when the light condition is false and a big response time with the like condition is true. So knowing this, we can perform a time-based blind SQL injection attack taking advantage of this. The idea is to evaluate only the heavy query when the condition is true. So uh, we have to take into consideration that there are two types of database engines, one of them uh, with optimization process, so you don't have to worry about where to set up the heavy condition and the light condition, but others uh, hasn't, uh, haven't uh, optimization process, so you have to know the default rule. So some of them evaluate from right to left and others from left to right. You have to know this in order to set up the heavy and the light condition. Well, to the trick to construct a heavy, uh, heavy query is just to join a table itself as many times as you need. For instance, a table with four records and two columns joining itself 10 times generates more than one million of records. So it's a big amount of data. So in this example, as you can see here, we are joining the sys user table with itself eight times, and we are comparing with, and we are using as a light condition the the comparison about the first letter of the first user with 300. As you can imagine, this is true because, because all of you know that ASCII is only until 2055. Do oh. you know it? <laughs> well, which table you can use to do, to do this? Well, the normal tables. In any of the tables in the dictionary can be used. In Microsoft SQL Server, sys users, sys columns, sys object, sys databases. In Oracle, all of the tables in the in in the dictionary, all users, all views, whatever. In MySQL 5, you can use the tables in the dictionary also. 
And in Microsoft Access Databases, you can use one of them. My MCS Access Objects in versions 97 and 2000, and MCS Access Storage in versions 2003 and 2007. And if not, you don't have access to these tables, or you don't have a dictionary, well, I suppose you can imagine the name of a usual suspect. Clients, customer, news, login, users, provider, or whatever. You only have to know or to guess the name of a table with some records, and you can extract all the data from the database uh, doing this. Well, in this example, we are using a wget command, and the important here, the most important here is the time assuring. As you can see, we are injecting a heavy query with uh, C users in a Microsoft SQL Server and a like condition. In this case, this is true because the ASCII value of the letter we are searching is we are searching for is uh, lower than 300, and the query starts at 23:49:11 and ends 14 seconds after. So this means a true. If we change the condition to a uh, uh, like with a like condition false, in this case comparing against zero, we obtain different time response, response time. It means it starts at 28 and it ends at 29. So it means a false answer. We can do the same in Oracle. This is with the true condition. It starts at uh, 55 and ends a lot of time after. 22 seconds. False, if we change, we obtain only one uh, second. The same in Access 2000, the same in, ac in Access 2007, and so on. As you can imagine, this is a tough task to do it manually, so we develop a tool. This tool is uh, available in CodePlex. Uh, this tool is called Marathon Tool, and it's ready, for, it's ready to work with Microsoft uh, uh, SQL Server databases with MySQL, with uh, Microsoft Access, and with Oracle databases is uh, is available also the source code and is developed in .NET. So let's see this in action. And before before I start this demo, let's see. Palacos demo, your demo? Ah, okay. Well, Palaco let the the SAM file the SAM file downloading. As you can see, we got uh, 679 characters of the database, and the SAM file is well. For sure, you recognize this file. So let's let's. Stop this and let, let's go with the last demo. In this example, we got a vulnerable web application, and, but this application always return the, returns the same page. So if we inject something always true, one equals to one, we obtain this record. And if we inject one equals to two, we obtain the same record. This happens uh, sometimes just because the injected uh, parameter is giving us the default value. So we, if the, the developer, if the, def uh, if the query doesn't return uh, any value, then give us the default value. And also this is uh, quite common in, for in forms where you, when the developer is going to in insert in the database whatever you type in the form. So let's try with Marathon Tool an attack. In this example, uh, you can see we are going to inject in SQL Server 2005, but this tool works with all of the versions. And we have to set up the vulnerable URL, the vulnerable parameter, and of course the time settings. In this case, we are going to consider a heavy query if the response page 
uh, give us more than one, hundred, one seconds in response time. This is just because we are working in, in the local machine, but if we are working across the internet, uh, this time should be higher, maybe five seconds or so on. And this is the tables that uh, the tool is going to test as, uh, in order to construct the heavy query. But you can type whatever you think is a good table. So let's in, 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 yes, initially, in, let's start. <laughs> and now we can try to get the, the user. So if we have a look to the log, we can see what the tool is doing. In this example, see, the, the tool is trying to construct a heavy query with three joins. And uh, it, it, it didn't work, so try with four, with five tables, with six tables, with s seven tables. And at the end, when the application, when, when, when the tool finds a right, or, uh, a heavy query, then start to find out the length of the username. So you can see the log in this format, but you can s s see it also with the whole query and you can see what the tool is doing. At the end of this process, we are going to find out the value. We got the length of the username is two, and of course, this is the most famous user in Microsoft SQL Server databases, you know? And let's change it to 90, and you can see here, we got the S, and we need to find B, B, A. We did it. Okay? Of course, if you want to download the whole schema, you need, you need to take your time. Of course. At the end, uh, with these four points, uh, none of them are silver, silver ballet, but all of them are new ballets in your pocket. And of course, these, uh, these techniques only success if you forget Bobby tables. If you don't forget Bobby tables, you never have to worry about this. And that's all. Alguna pregunta? How could I know the answer to that? <laughs> Not that I know. Not that I know. I guess it's very difficult to establish the fault rules that are valid for every application. Good to know. <laughs> uh, you repeat, please? No, all, all the tools are just uh, proof of concept. You have the source code. We are, we, we, our job is not uh, delivering hacking tools. <laughs> 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 So the, the, s most of these techniques are valid for Postgres too. So you can extend the tools if you want. <laughs> and if you, I mean, I have Cocoa for Mac uh, version of some of these tools, and also kind of hacker black screen with green letters tools of it. So if you write me and prove that you're not a kitty, then you can get those too.
President. Last year, one of the security magazines had an article on uh, sequels in, uh, in Jack 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 No, no, not at all, because you can always avoid those, like, you can always change the spaces by inline comments and things like that, so. That's not a very good technique for avoiding this. I mean, you, you can always, there's always some kind of firewall technique that you can use uh, on application level, like, you, for sure, if you're sanitizing your parameters before, there should, there will never, there's never an excuse to have something like union select something or, I mean, very, very few excuses you can have. I mean, there's not many applications that are expecting some, some, such a parameter. So again, if you sanitize your queries, it's, it's, that's fine. The, the difficult part of it is because the nature of every web application accessing a database is so different. For having something between the application and the database that is generic, as we were mentioning before, that's really, really difficult. So it's up to the developer or the, or the web application firewall make some techniques here. Can you apply this to uh, a fair number of commercial databases to see whether or not they were at this point trying to sanitize and protect themselves? Well, you have the proof of concept here for my CQL, all the versions of SQL Server, uh, Oracle, so. No, no, but uh, have, have you tried this on, on commercial databases at this point in time just to get some feel for how many of them are, are really vulnerable? What do you mean by commercial databases? Yeah, no. Ah, so real time, real life example. Yeah, of course, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course, of course, for sure. I don't. Know. <laughs> 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 Haven't just seen the cameras. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. Thank you for your patience.